Fred, listen, you can follow me on Facebook at Brandon Fred Jones, or you can follow me on Twitter at BFred Jones. This is Jeremiah Gray, man, with G Sports. You can follow me on Facebook, Jeremiah Gray, a.k.a. G, and on Twitter, G underscore paid in full, zero eight. Pay me the money. <laughs> <laughs> money, money, money. <laughs> Well, what's up, everybody? This is your boy, Coach Hurricane Hemp. You can follow me on Facebook at Henry Singleton or on Twitter at Henry Hayo U15. Listen, this is your boy, Fred. Listen, you can follow me on Facebook at Brandon Fred Jones or you can follow me on Twitter at B Fred Jones. This is Jeremiah Gray, man, with G Sports. You can follow me on Facebook, Jeremiah Gray, aka G, and on Twitter, G underscore paid in full, zero eight. Pay me the money! <laughs> Money, money, money. Get it, G. And now on the sports, everyday activity and life, man. My name is Jaquan Jackson, SMU Commit, and you tune into FanView. Yo, what's up? This is Pugu Williams. 2017 Mr. Football. You are now tuned into FanView Live on New Orleans Talk Network. Welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome to Fan View, Real Fans Talk Sports on the Walls Talk Network. Listen, this is your boy Fred. G Sports in the building, man. We got a good show for y'all today. Got a good show for y'all tonight, boy. Got that drama going on in Sports Boy. Got that drama. All day. All day, every day. We get it on and popping. Listen, y'all know what it is. Y'all know what time it is. It's the best fan sports show on the internet. And we got something great going for y'all tonight. Poncho Tula's own quarterback, Louise LSU Commit. I'm about to say Louisiana State. LSU Commit. You know, TJ Kingley. Will be on Finley. Finley will be on tonight. Y'all tuning in around 6 30. Gonna be calling in. Y'all got some questions y'all wanna ask. Be tuning in for that around that time. Y'all know I have to do every time before I get ready to start this show. I started off right. I gave a shout out and salute for the military, the armed forces, Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, Coast Guard, first responders, police department, local fire department. Thank you guys so much for the services y'all do. I can't thank y'all enough each and every week. I'm gonna give y'all a shout out and salute. Us as Saints fans, preseason tonight, first game, Jacksonville is going down tonight. We'll be talking a little bit about, about that later on the show, because this show could be about an hour long tonight. Right. We know y'all tuning in. I got people emailing me already. Afraid you're streaming the game, you're streaming the game. Get to y'all tonight. Got to do this show. Got to talk to these sports, G. Indeed. We got to get it right. You got to get it on and popping. Listen, we're going to start this show off with a little controversy down in Alabama. Jalen Hurts. People don't understand. Finally, he was questioning the media during practice mm -hmm. about that controversy between him and his quarterback position. Him not being being able to talk to media about this situation. Kind of letting this thing spiral out of control mm -hmm. to the degree. People not thinking that Jalen Hurts gets a fair shake at the quarterback position in Alabama. The question we have for everybody is, y'all tune in, leave your comments. We want to talk about this. Did Jalen Hurts get a fair shake after the National Championship game? Is Jalen Hurts getting a fair shot? At Alabama right now, is what's going on right now in the situation got out of control? It, has a narrative already been created? Right. That's a question we have for everybody. Y'all tune in. Um, Arthur Moses, who that nation baby? I mean the house team is ready, young and hungry. Facts. Oh yeah. Oh Listen, yeah. It's football time. It's baby. football time, baby. It's football time. I, I started off with this. How I feel about regard Jella Hurts. Um, I think it's just. I think if you're a player of Alabama, pay close attention. Because at the end of the day, like he said in his interview, people go, you can look at this on YouTube. He already stated that no one got a chance to talk to him about it. Mm -hmm. No one came up to him. None of his coaches, none of them came up to him and expressed anything regarding, you know, the position. You know, they kind of let this whole thing get out of control as far as the narrative of it. I think that at the end of the day, you got to show some massive respect. The man won 25 games for you. He only lost one game, now the national championship game against Clemson, the previous year. Now, granted, I, I respect that it's a battle, and it's going to be a battle for position, but not to address it publicly, not to address it with him. He said Coach Nick Saban never really came talk to him. None of his coaches never came talk to him about it. No one ever really came to him and said, hey, listen, you know, this is the situation. You and him are going to compete for the job and let the best man win. They kind of let this thing just kind of trigger along. Now it's at a point where, hey, look, 
if I'm not going to be the quarterback for this team, if I'm not going to be the guy, then, you know, people who don't know, he graduates in January. Mm -hmm. He has a right to transfer and go play any way he wants to go play. I think Alabama may have mishandled Jalen Hurts for a guy for the most important position in, college, in, in sports and just let it, just let it be what it's going to be. They should have came out there and publicly at least told the young man what the direction, what the program was, and not to just disrespect that man like that. Uh, I got to disagree with you, Fred. Once you get to college, man, you consider a, a man now. This is not high school. This is not park ball anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick Saban is the GOAT of college football. Agreed. He doesn't owe you any explanation. He doesn't, I, I don't feel like it is, it's Nick Saban's duty to come sit down and, and babysit you and say, hey, hey, look, Jalen, you're not the quarterback of the team this year. It's going to be Tua. You've been uh, uh, atrocious as a, a, of a passer the last two years. I appreciate what you've done for me, but we're going to move into a different direction. Why does he have to do that? Nah, I do think that his quarterback coach, who he sees on a regular basis, who is he, he's having team uh, position meetings with mm -hmm. every day, who he has more of a relationship with. Right. That's the guy that should sit him down and talk to him about what's going on and, mm -hmm. and tell him what Nick Saban is thinking and, and things of that nature. But Nick Saban doesn't owe Jalen Hurts a damn thing. Okay? And at the end of the day, they won a national championship uh -huh. because Jalen Hurts had a lot to do with that getting them to that point. Right. But let's, 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 let's be very, very clear. Alabama got to the championship more so because that running game, that start off as a line, and, and that nasty defense. defense. Right. This has nothing to do with Jalen Hurts was a, a phenomenal passer or he was a great, great quarterback. Don't get me wrong. He made plays with his legs and put a right. lot of pressure on defense, improvising with his legs and things like that. But blowing this out of proportion because he and his feelings, because they didn't sit down and talk to him about what direction they want moving. Nick Saban, you should see how he liked to move. Nick Saban likes to move in silence. Yeah. He, he doesn't like the media to know his next move. Right. He we, It's already understood he's going to be a quarterback battle. Why do they have to tell you that anyway? Why do they got to sit down and say, hey, well, you know, we took you out, and when we took you out, we put two in, and we got a, he gave us a better chance to win. So, look, it's going to be a quarterback competition. That's already understood. So, but, why? The, but, I don't know what he's in his feelings about. But, and then his daddy made it even worse. His dad made it worse. When he came out and said, my son, gonna be the, my son going to be the best free agent in, in college football. So, you already creating the narrative. And, 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 and saying that y'all might leave. And, and I said this after the national championship. I said, Jalen Hurts better stay put because he was 14 credits away from graduating. 15, why, yeah. why the hell would you leave? He should, he's going to stay. He's going to stay. Why, exactly. He's, he's why, stay. Would, why would he even stay. think about leaving? What he needs to do is he needs to tell Nick Saban, look, don't play me at all. Right. Don't play me at all. Give two the job. Let me red shirt. Right. And let me, let, me have a, let me be a graduate transfer and let me have two years of eligibility. But like I said last year, after the national championship, bro, Jalen Hurts is not an NFL quarterback. He's not. He's not an NFL quarterback. So that's why this is not even a big deal to me. In my mind, look, get your degree. Uh -huh. If you want to transfer, that's cool. I get it. You, you still got that. You still want to yeah. show people that you can play. Yeah. You still got that love for the game. I get it. Just don't go to North Carolina, by the way. But Man. you're not like that as a quarterback. <laughs> if you're really thinking about going to the NFL, maybe you need to switch positions. And that's that's my take on the whole Jalen Hurts. So you situation. mean like you mean like so you you don't think Miss Alabama mishandled the quarterback situation? That said that Jalen Hurts was a potential pro quarterback talent. They wouldn't handle it like that. So you're saying because he's not a pro quarterback talent? Man, that, they know he bad. <laughs> they know he bad as a passer. <laughs> they know that. So they you, know that. So you, that's your position. So you so you're not looking at it from a position. Of, okay, Jalen Hurts. You know this team won X Y Z amount of games. They only lost one game. They don't want that championship. And how you want to handle? That particular position. You're not looking at it, though. You're just looking at he bad. And at the end of the day, you have, you have to know that this guy that they recruited, who's the number one recruit quarterback in the country, mm -hmm. that they recruited, that they got in there, play, play, that, play that half, mm -hmm. that you're going to be in the quarterback battle with that guy. Not saying he shouldn't be in the battle. I'm just saying that how they decide to not say anything. I'm saying it's not and Nick. And let a narrative just get created. I'm saying as Nick, for, in, Nick, in Nick Saban position, uh -huh. Nick Saban doesn't owe Jalen Hurts a damn thing. He doesn't. Like I said, his position coach should have been the one to sit down and talk to him about what's going on and telling him, look, this it's is the QB direction we're going. Yeah, because QB Nick Saban, at the end of the day, everybody know defense is what Nick Saban's forte is. Correct. It's That's not right. offense. That's okay. Correct. So, and Nick Saban, again, Nick Saban feels that he doesn't owe the media anything. Right. He feels like he doesn't owe Jalen Hurst anything. And I feel like when Nick, when Jalen Hurst's daddy came mm -hmm. out and made the statement he made, I think that made Nick Saban even more so be like, you know what? I'm not even going to address it. I'm just going to let it play out how it's going to play out. Right. I, I, I look at it as, at the end of the day, privately, I would, I'm going to have a conversation with the guy who helped me win 25 games. Privately. 
Just because he played the quarterback position, I'm going to have a conversation with this guy. For me not to have a conversation with him at all, it's just like, okay, listen, bro, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sit down and talk to this guy, let him know the situation that he is in. Listen, bro, you got to know that, listen, you're going to compete with this guy. If you can't beat him out for a job, you're about to sit. He didn't play the second half. We put him in for a reason. Mm-hmm. You got to know this. Have that established level of communication with Jalen Hurst and let this guy know, listen, we appreciate everything you've done for this program, for this mm-hmm. university, how you've been a great, you know, citizen. You, mm-hmm. you haven't been out here publicly. You've done all the respectable things that we want any collegiate, you know, student athlete want to do. Mm-hmm. Didn't make this any worse. Mm-hmm. But you got to compete for this job. And if you can't beat this guy at this job, you about to sit. You want injury away from getting back in. But for them not to let the narrative get created on, on to, it looks like media-wise that it looks like it's an unfair battle. No. That's what it looks like. I'm not saying it's not. No. I'm not saying that Jalen Hurst is the better passer than him. We know he's not. Right. We understand that. Right. But from a media standpoint, from a perception, it looks like it's already, the narrative's already created. That, boy, you're, not, you're, about, you're about to see the field again. You're not about to play. And it, it appears that it's an unfair battle. That's what, that's what everybody going to insinuate because – Two of the one, one of the national championship. championship. That's why people are thinking that. I mean, at the end of the day, if Nick Saban wanted to name two of the starter, he would have did that by now. Right. He obviously thinks in his mind that Jalen Hurt does have a shot to still win the starting quarterback right. job. Otherwise, he would have named two of the starting quarterback. So, all of this stuff about the narrative has been created. I don't buy that BS, man. Nick Saban is going to let it play out through camp. They ain't camp right now. Right. They're going through everything right now. And it's going to, the, the time going to, it's going to tell it all when they get ready to get close to week one. Mm-hmm. And Nick Saban going to put it out there. This is my starting quarterback. Right. And if Jalen, if Jalen Hurst think he's as good as he thinks he is, and he's good as his dad thinks he is, he's he going to win the job. job. Point blank, period. But if he's smart, I'm going to Nick Saban. I'm having a meet with him. I'm saying, Coach, I respect you. I appreciate everything you've done for me. Let, come, let me come here and start as a true freshman. Um, right. Don't play me this season. Don't play me. So I can red shirt. Sure. Get my graduate transfer and go have two years of eligibility. Yeah, because he, that's the he best graduates thing. in January. That's the best thing for him to do. He that's gra- the best thing for him to do. He, he graduates in January. For people who don't know, he only has 15 credits left. He graduates in January, and he could be out the door. And today, Marshawn Lattimore out there handling business. Mm-hmm. Early, off the dump. Mm-hmm. Moncrief, get your rocks together. People here watching the game. I got y'all the second half, baby. Got y'all. Y'all stay tuned. Listen, we're going to shift gears here. Ch-ch-ch. Alvin Kamara in the news got comments. Alvin Kamara came out there boldly and made statements. And I'm gonna kind of read it to y'all because some of y'all don't know what he said. Mm-hmm. But I gotta get y'all, gotta get y'all take on this. Alvin Kamara basically told us to, to he did an interview. And he said, um, we'd have beat the shit out of the Eagles because we was rolling. If we won versus Minnesota, I knew nobody was gonna stop us because we was all the way back. Mm-hmm. That's what Alvin Kamara had to say. He also goes, to, goes out to mention, um, it's a certain point where you blank just do everything you could and, and blank it still don't go your way. That's how I feel about the game. I feel like we did everything. We came back all the we, we came all the way back, and then shit, hap- shit just happens like that. It's like that in the um, one out of a million type situation. You know, I kind of, e- I'm not even kind of mad. I was mad, of course, but it was like, how does that even shit happen? Um, it's not even real. It's almost not realistic. Like what the, like what the fuck? Right. You know, that's what his comments was. Right. Right. And then he made the comments about Alabama too. Alabama. Yeah, I don't have those comments. There. He had comments about Alabama too. Mm-hmm. Um, and go so- on a scene way. So. My question is to everybody, you know, Alvin Kamara, you know, do we feel that, you know, we're to beat the Eagles? Do we feel what Alvin Kamara was feeling? I mean, we're to beat the fuck out of the Eagles. Right. You know, I actually feel where Alvin Kamara was coming from. Right. If they'd have won that game, the way Minnesota went into Philadelphia and mm-hmm. flocked, the way the Saints were playing, I think I'm with Alvin Kamara on this one. I think they go in Philadelphia, they go in there, they handle the business. Right. They come off maybe in the first quarter, have some sort of slump or so, give or take, and after that, it's on and popping. They would have defeated, to me, the Philadelphia Eagles and go ahead and went into the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. That's just my take on that. And goddamn, the goddamn Saints that gave them a touchdown to mediocrity. <laughs> Blake Bortles that scored them a touchdown. See, this, ah, it drives me. I know it's preseason, but it ain't the point. Point is, it's mediocrity and Blake Bortles. 
I don't like him. He's bad. Suspect. But I'm with Alvin Camaro on this one here. At the end of the day, the Saints go in Philadelphia and handle the business. And who is 29? Kirk Coleman. Kirk Coleman? You're getting used to you're getting used to the system. I got you. I understand your point. But what's your take on Alvin Kamara's comments? Um, I I didn't have a problem with Alvin Kamara making those comments about the Eagles and saying he was gonna beat the piss out of him and all that stuff. And I, I don't have a problem with him saying the things he said about Alabama. What I do have a problem with is the stuff Chris Carter said about him. Yes. Um, I don't know if the producer has the things that Chris Carter said. I don't, I, I don't remember exactly verbatim what Chris Carter said, but I know basically at the end of the day he was basically trying to say that um, Alvin Kamara was out of line. And who is, who is he to think that he could say something like that and, and, the, and the Saints um, can't win outside the dome and all of them kind of things. First of all, this is what people got to realize. When you come to the, when you become in the NFL, mm-hmm. I don't give a damn if you was an undrafted free agent, if you was a seven round pick, it don't matter which where you was drafted. If you come in the NFL and you show out, whatever you say now is gonna be blown up. That's facts. If this would have been JT Barrett or, or, or well, JT Barrett ain't played yet, well somebody that was on the Saints team that was low profile, this wouldn't even be a story. But the fact that Alvin Kamara was the offensive of rookie of the year. Yeah. And he was all over the headlines last year, and he was a he was a big part of the Saints' success. Right, it's a big deal. Um, this, and what you and what you and this is a clear indication of you know when when players start getting that pub in the NFL, yeah. they're gonna use it to their advantage. Right, Alvin Kamara has been all over the TV, all over ESPN in the off season. Yeah, this dude know what he's doing, man. He been he on he on he on uh, for, uh pardon interruption. Right. He on uh first take. He on undisputed. This guy is marketing the piss out of himself right now. His workout videos are going wild. He's marketing the piss out of himself. Yeah. Alvin Kamara is doing certain things to be able to put himself in the limelight. This dude, you're going to see this dude with a whole bunch of endorsements before it's all said and done. People got to understand it's, it's bigger than just football sometimes. Yeah. Do I think he believed the comments that he said? Yeah, yeah I, think, I believe he believed he believe everything he just said. I but he said. at the end of the day, Chris Carter took it, it, took it to a whole other level about right. the stuff that Kamara was saying. I don't think Kamara was trying to say that the Eagles were sad and no. he don't respect them. No. He just saying, look, we, the we was rolling. We were rolling. We was going to beat them people. We was going to beat them people. We won 10 plus games in the regular season. We was rolling. And he felt that the way the Minnesota beat them, it had to, it had to, it had to be, it had to, they had to get beat by a miracle. Right. So I'm not going to take what Kamara said and, and, and be like, man, Kamara, who are you to say something like that? And you're disrespecting the Eagles. The people want the Super Bowl. Man. No. That's how you felt. That's how you felt. I respect him. And I, I, I say this all the time, man. You know what Chris Carter problem is? Chris Carter problem is he always want people to be politically correct. And he's that way on ESPN. And I think that people that are politically correct, I don't trust them. I don't trust you. You <laughs> always got to say the right thing at the right time. So you're, the, you're a people pleaser. Like, like Ray Lewis. I don't like that. <laughs> I like somebody that's going to speak their mind. That's how I am. I'm going right. to I'm I'm say what I'm supposed to say. I'm going to say how I feel. I'm going to say what I mean or I mean what I see. And that's what Kamara doing. If Kamara would have came out and said, man, the Eagles sad. I don't know how the hell these people won the Super Bowl. They terrible. Right. I would have a problem with that because now you're talking stupid. stupid. The man just feel like he would have beat him. They would have beat him. He didn't say they were going to win the Super Bowl. He didn't go out and say, we would have beat the Eagles. The way that, we was playing, we was going to beat the Eagles. And I, and I, and and I, I respect, respect that. that. And, then, and maybe the, the language he used, that probably rolled people the wrong way. Right. I have no problem with that. That's him. That's him. That's him. And then he also came out and said that he feels that he fell in the draft. Because of his appearance. Yeah. So he's been, in the, he's been in the media a lot lately for a lot of comments he said. The stuff he said about Alabama. Look, you know, when he was at Alabama, it was Derrick Henry, T.J. Yeldon. I forgot the other kid that was there. So, I mean, you wouldn't go play in front of the guys. It's not that Alvin Kamara wasn't good enough. It's just and, and that. They, and they had Bo Scarborough coming in as a number one rated running back, a five-star rated running back coming out of high school. And I, I think that. Derrick Henry and Yildon, he fit the Alabama scheme better than what Kamara did. At the end of the day, when he when he and then he went to Hutchinson Junior College, College, lit it up, went to Tennessee. Even when he was at Tennessee, I mean, he 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 shared carries with Jalen Hurt. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I think he only had like 200 carries when he, when he was at Tennessee. He didn't have that. He, he didn't have that many carries. But I'm gonna tell you, when he did get his shot, he showed out. And so. uh I, I had to disagree with him saying that he felt like he fell in the draft because his appearance. I still think 
even if you would have been the, the, the bona fide star at Tennessee, I still think you would have been a third round pick. pick. That's just my opinion. And that's just how I think that has a lot to do with the program that you're representing. Right, right. The program that you're coming from, even though you're playing against SEC competition. Right. It's just right. That the fact that somebody has to showcase their talent in this program because right. this program is not right. statistically good right now. Right. So somebody has to do something. It doesn't necessarily mean, oh, he's in the SEC. No, it's just that Tennessee don't have a quarterback. Right. They don't have much run. They don't have many receivers. Right. Defense is atrocious, you know. So somebody has to put up some sort of level of statistics. Right. So there would have been a point where, nah, I'm not going to take that, you know, level of risk right. on – Alvin Kamara because one he was Shannon Baffert two Tennessee's not a very good program if Tennessee, now I would say this if he was at Georgia mm-hmm. at the time I'd have been like you know what hey you reconsider the draft position because you had a couple of guys that came out of this program during Mark Rick you know mm-hmm. during this time like you know, they were first round picks right obviously Ty Gurley being one a former one being no Sean Moreno you're just looking at some of the backs that came you know Isaiah Crowell before he had the train so you so you saying Kamara fell because the program he was in I say statistically he was very good but because he went to Tennessee and it, I, I gotta disagree with you on it I think because he's at Tennessee I think it's because he didn't he didn't have a lot of film he only had 200 carries when he was at Tennessee right this had but when he got his shot he, he showed he, he showed out he showed out so but being at t- and, I think, and then last year he was at Tennessee. I want to say Tennessee started that y'all seven and zero, and then they kind of started like losing games toward the end or no, something like Tennessee that. Tennessee lost the first game of the season. I forgot. Nah, what man, I'm telling you, man. They I didn't they play USC. No, man, that's the year they had Josh Dobbs and them, man. Yeah. They started off hot. I'm telling you, they 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 beat George on a hail mary pass. Yeah, they, but they I think they lost week one. If, I, if I'm correct. But no, he nah, had, nah, he nah. What happened was week one they won in triple overtime. Cause I'm telling you, that year, that year they lost. They won like three games on the last play. Yeah. One of them was a hail mary. The other one, Josh Dobbs ran. Ran did some, and he got hit in the end zone. He flipped, flipped over, over and stuff like that. Flipped I think over. that was the week one game you're talking about. They was about to get upset. I think they're about to lose. Yeah, I, and they I, won. I, 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 and there was another uh, game they won. But my point is, Kamara didn't fall on the draft because of his appearance. Man, at, damn, seventy five percent of the league got dreads. Now I don't know. They don't have that many people in the, in the league with, with nose rings in the middle like that. But you can't tell I, me NBA, uh, NFL team passed on him because no, he got a no, nose no, ring. No, 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 Come on, man. No, 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 no. no. I'm not about to believe that. That's not, that has, I don't believe that. That, that, that wasn't it. That wasn't that it. reason why you wouldn't pick in the Like round. I say, man, Kamara saying controversial stuff in the media. They'll get himself on TV. Mm-hmm. They keep putting himself out there. They give himself more pub. I'm telling you, these these shoe companies and all these these five four uh five uh <laughs> for uh, 400 companies, yeah. seeing him all over the media like that, they like this. He's man. becoming a social. He's doing he's doing things. Let me get this kid. Himself, let yeah. me get this kid a part of our brand. Let's give him X amount of dollars to, to, to uh, yeah. wear our brand. And now he 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 got and three I don't, four endorsements. And I don't think and I I don't have any disagreement with what he's doing as far as him creating a social brand for himself. Yeah. At the end of the day, that's what you're supposed to do. When you become a, right. a, a figure and like Odell has done, right. you know, you look at some other guys and what they have done socially. Social network has been a popular thing. Man, listen, bro, you had a great rookie season. Everyone wants to see you. Everyone wants to see you out there. You know, so yeah, you at the ESPYS. You 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 you're, you're over here. You are over. He here. walk. He walk from the Superdome you know, to his house, house every day. He has a, he was interacting with the fans. Yeah. Man, he he know people gonna be taking pictures and putting videos of him on social yeah. media. He using his platform oh, the right way. Right way. I guarantee you, by the end of this year, you are gonna see Alvin Kamara about three or four endorsements. He know what he's doing. No, he know. Yeah, he know what he's doing. Jump man. You, hey, look. You you want to talk up? You want you want to talk a check? Adidas. Where you at? You know Nike. Where you at? He's creating a brand for himself. I, I don't disagree with that at all. At the end of the day, I will say this, though. Your rookie season is your rookie season now. Mm-hmm. Off season, off season. Right. You're heading to the second year now. A lot of guys, you know, look at second year running backs as this is a slump year. That's what people see. They, right. They see slump. Like, okay, rookie success, sophomore slump. I don't really see that for Alvin Kamara. Right. I think Alvin Kamara put, outproduces his rookie season. But to me, most people, what they see is, they see rookie slump written all over Alvin Kamara, especially when you see a guy that's out there publicly, socially. Right. But at the end of the day, if he can just focus on what he does best out of the backfield, mm-hmm. I, I'm not ever expecting Alvin Kamara to be a, 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 a 1,500-yard rusher. But I, but if he can get so – you, So you don't think Alvin Kamara could be every now and then? I don't think Alvin Kamara is a guy that I want to attribute 325 carries to. I'd actually, I'd actually. That's every down back. No, no. Nah, nah. Marshall Falk can't get that many carries. Because I, I think he's a, he's that good to. Uh, I'm not saying he's gonna be Marshall Falk, right. but I think he can be that type of running back in the NFL. Where he's 
getting about 16, 17 carries a game, or he's getting eight to nine catches and having over 200 yards all purpose. Right. Every game. Now, and, and being and being one of the best all purpose backs in the league. What we talking about when you're talking about 16, 17 carries, you're talking about 280 carries a game. 280 carries a season. It's a lot of carries. I mean, it's a lot of carries. And you gotta think about this too. <laughs> you gotta think about this too. Kamara fresh. True. He only had 200 carries at Tennessee. Right. So he ain't got that much wearing talent body, body, huh? Right. He you know And so last year, what he he ain't had that many carries? No, he, he had less than 150. So I, I, I think this this full game suspension that Mark Ingram got gonna be a blessing in the skies because we're gonna see a lot of Alvin Kamara. Now understand this too. You got 16 weeks of game tape. So that's why people look at sophomore slumps, because you could kind of not say predict, but you can strategize because a Mark Ingram is not going to be in that backfield for the first four games. So we're going to start saying, say, hey, listen, let's more focus on what his abilities are, and let's see if we can try to limit it, his playmaking ability. And all that's going to do is open it up for the passing game move. Well, you know, you got you, you to pick your poison you, with you the Saints. Yeah, you, you, you what you going to try to you gonna try to stop 41, or you going to stop all these, all these monsters we got at receiver? If you had to ask me, I'm going to, I, I would probably try to stop Drew Brees. I'm sorry. That's just me. Well, Alvin Kamara going to run wild. I let him run wild. He going to run wild. I and our offensive of line is going to be even better than it was last year. Yeah. Toronto Armstead is healthy. You know, R- trust Ryan, and believe. Ryan Ramshack is at. The whole line is healthy. Max Unger. Max Unger is Pete. healthy. You know, Larry Walford. All these guys are coming back healthy. You know, so mm-hmm. I do expect, you know, more continuity, you know, from them. But he made some big time statements. He's been in the public eye this entire offseason. From the SBs to these comments, his workout videos. Now, the season getting ready to start, it's the first quarter. Hey, he got to show up. He got to produce. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, you can't have them comments. Not be because last year, the microphone wasn't in, wasn't, in, wasn't in his face. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So the question is, you know, now, you even seen at Saints, at Saints training camps, guess who they're talking to at the, at, the, at the practices? They're talking to Alvin Kamara. Right. They got a microphone in his face. You see what I'm saying? They, they, I ain't never seen him have, really have a, a, a Mike and Mark Ingram face his whole time here. Right. here. Never. Right. You know, it's been Sean Payton, Drew Brees. Right. Those have been the guys who, who get the microphone. This year, people won't hear what Alvin Kamara got to say all the time. So he's created a brand in the market for himself. These comments are even more about that brand and marketing himself. So I'm saying to myself, man, look, you now you got to have your work has to Start showing production. And people who are not tuning in the game, the, the, listen, the score is 7 Jacksonville, Saints 3. Don't get so caught up in 7 and 3. It just, it's a preseason game. You look at the C, tape. You need tape. I mean, I just, that's just what that is. Any preseason game you're looking at, you're just looking at footage. You're not looking at C. You need reps. <laughs> that's just. Man, a lot, this is a lot of stuff vanilla right now. Yeah. You, you, I, I don't expect. So much of different plays, like, like, like Alvin Kamara today. I don't expect Alvin Kamara to – I'm not going to have Alvin Kamara out there with a whole bunch of snaps. Listen, once the first quarter over, listen, you can come sit down. Really, once after the first series, I'm sitting him down. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I, 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 he's too important because you don't have a Mark Ingram playing for the first four games. These first four games are not that, you know, dominant for me. He, I wouldn't be trying to play him – now, the third preseason game, I know a lot of guys, the first team get more reps. That would be the game I'd be more focused on. But after, but after that, man, look, you sit I'm, him down. I'm, and I'm curious to see how Terrence West going to look um, for us. I, I'm really curious to see how he's going to how he gonna fit into the Saints offense because I think that kid could be a big part in that four games while Mark Ingram was gone. Uh, I, I, like, I like Terrence West when he's with the Ravens. I think he could be a really good complimentary back to what Alvin Kamara do. So, um, and I want to see what Boston Scott going to look like, man. The, the, the seven-round pick, pick from Louisiana Tech. Tech. That, that kid is going to be a problem, a, a mismatch nightmare when they put him in motion or they try to give him speed sweeps or um, t- uh, tosses and stuff like that or throw him in a screen game. He going to be a problem. So, I, I can't wait to see how them boys going to look in this preseason to see if they're going to help this team down the road. I, I'm looking forward to Trey Quan Smith. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, the rookie receiver that we got at the yeah. third round. Well, we're going to get into that. Yeah, we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. Yeah, we're we're going to get into that. Mm-hmm. But... Like I said, I, I'm looking – look, when it comes to Alvin Kamara, I, I like what he did his offseason. I like his comments, man. I really, really like what he had to say. Because he just – he felt like at the end of the day – I like about players that when they people feel like this, they, they was going to win and they was going to outproduce somebody, mm-hmm. I like when they say it. 
Right. He's not being shallow about it. Right. He's not saying, man, you know what, man? I, it was a good game. You know? mm -hmm. He's saying, no, 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 no. We was going there and, and, and beating them. Yeah. We beat them. Yeah. And, and I like players to feel that confidence because they believe in their abilities. And they be well, also, let me tell you what I really love about it more than it. He believes in the guys that he had in that locker room. Right. He believes in his teammates. Right. He believed that, man, look, we would have went in Philadelphia and handled a business. He ain't said nothing about winning no Super Bowl and all this and all that. He believed that the guys, the way they were playing right now, man, we were fucking rolling. We was going to Philadelphia, and they didn't know how, they didn't know, they didn't know what about to hit them. I think, I, I think we're gonna be Philly. Yeah, I, 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 straight up. I straight up. I think we're gonna feel be like, Philly. I, I felt when he you made those comments. You can't tell me no different. When he made those comments, I'm like, now nah, granted, I'm a Saints fan, but that's how I felt. I felt like they was going to Philadelphia and handling business. Philadelphia was not gonna beat them with, with, with the Nick Foles at quarterback. That's just the way I felt. They was not about to go out there and beat them. That's just the way I felt. That's the way I took it. And and I'm just big on momentum, man. I'm big on momentum. The Saints momentum that they had going into that game that they was going to have going into Philadelphia, bro. It was going to be unprecedented. I mean, the way we came back against probably the, arguably the best defense in the league that uh, last year in Minnesota. Yeah, man, bro. Yeah. I mean. We was rolling. I, just, I think we was going to go. I, nah, do I think we were going to blow them out or anything like no, that? No, no. But I, I touched down win. Or, I do think we were going to go in there. And if Patrick Robinson don't have that pick six in the first quarter, Minnesota is about to go a 14 nothing on Philly. That interception that, by Patrick that Robinson changed the whole momentum changed the whole, of the game. Changed the whole complexion of the, the game. game. So if people forget about that. It changed the whole complexion of the game. Then after that, it just seemed like everything just went downhill for Minnesota. Mm -hmm. But I do think the Saints is going to match up good with them people. I do think the Saints is going to come out victorious. Mm -hmm. And – I if it ever come over and go say it, I'm gonna say we was gonna win that goddamn Super Bowl, straight up. We was gonna win the Super Bowl. We was destined, but that need, that's neither here nor there. No here nor there. Those those turn of events didn't happen, but I think they was playing with the right. They was playing with the right energy, just like that year that we lost to the 49ers, mm -hmm. and we lost on, on on that that Vernon Davis touchdown in the end zone with Alex Smith. Yeah, we, we was beating the Giants. The Saints were not losing to the Giants. Right. The Saints were going to beat the breaks because the Giants had to come to New Orleans that mm -hmm. year. We wouldn't have to win to New York. The Saints were going to beat the Giants. And I think that to me, if you had to ask me, we was going to beat them in the Super Bowl, the Patriots. But listen, for everybody has been tuning in. We've been promoting this for the past few days. Quarterback out of Ponchatoula High School. You want to give a man a proud introduction? T.J. Finley, man, been, been watching this kid since he's been in the eighth grade of uh, – in Hammond, uh, started off at St. Thomas Aquinas, started as a ninth grader. Uh, I want to say he threw for over 2,500 yards his freshman year at St. Thomas Aquinas, now he's at Ponchatoula, um, had a phenomenal sophomore year, um, just committed to LSU about a month ago. Right. Probably, the, the, probably, no doubt about it, he's the best quarterback in the state in for the that state. 2020 class. 6'6". He, he is. He it's is. All a bit of 6'6", six, six, can make every throw. Kids, an NFL type on. Um, um, and the route he's going, he's probably going to play on Sundays if everything going go right, barring injury. Uh, T.J. Finley, man, are you on the line, bro? Yes, sir, I'm here. Appreciate turn the, turn the volume up for us, producer. T.J., are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. Oh, okay, there you go, there you go. T.J., man, I know you're just coming out of practice, bro. I appreciate you taking the time, bro, out your, out your busy schedule. I know y'all just starting school, man, to come out and uh, do this segment for us on FanView, bro. Yes, sir, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. Well, just 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 to start it all, man, uh, kind of just talk about your your, your process, right, or your recruiting process, man, leading up to committing to LSU. And, uh... Seventy yards, starting to run, and stuff like that. So, you know, the bond I created with him that that all started it. You know, and then I'm from Louisiana, so mm -hmm. you know, it's always great to to play for your hometown. Right. Um, when he left, you know, then Coach O came in and he realized my my talent early. When I was at St. Thomas Aquinas, mm -hmm. um, when I threw for you know over two uh, two thousand five hundred yards, I think fourteen, fifteen touchdowns, something like that, with a little to none interceptions. Right. Um, you know, he came to my school, he visited me, you know, we talked sometimes and then ever since that, you know, ever since that I've been wanting to go to LSU because 
I felt like that was one of the main schools that, uh, you know, stayed in contact with me, you know, basically showed more interest in me than any other school, you know, that, I, that I've been recruited by. Um, then, you know, I went to the camp this, um, this spring. You know, I went up there, visited the school, uh, talked to some of the recruits. They were trying to get me to uh, commit early, like Cardell Thomas, uh, Derek Stingley was talking to me. Um, you know, Noah Kane's, you know, players like that. Right. Um, you know, they all tied in to, to my decision uh, to go to LSU. Man. Um, you know, it's just basically an overall great decision because, you know, it's, it's easy for my family to get to my games. Right. All my mm-hmm. family is from Hammond, Louisiana, so they can easily, you know, come to my games. Uh, all the, the town of Pondertool and Hammond are, are supporting me. they behind me. So, you know, I, I, I'm always – um, about making my city proud and, you know, making where I'm from, making a, um, making sure we can get back to the national championship. Right. Ooh, I like that statement, national championship. Get the, get the program back to that. And, level. you know, it all, it all starts with a quarterback. All, yeah, it, it, when you're you picking your recruiting classes right. and you picking a, a team that's going to be able to compete for a national championship, it all starts with the quarterback position. And I think Coach Owen and the rest of the staff realize that if you can get somebody like T.J. Finley a part of, from that 2020 class, you set up for the for success. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So that makes a lot of sense of what he's saying. And then the class they got coming in for 2019 mm-hmm. and some of the kids they got committed for 2020, the sky's the limit for that LSU uh, recruiting class, bro. T.J., I got a question for you, man. This is Fred, man. Um, when did you know that you realized that, man, you had a – like you're now six foot six. You know, 200 and maybe 50 some pounds. When did you realize, man, listen, I can play quarterback at a very high level? Like, when did you realize, come to that conclusion, that, man, listen, I think I can really be a dominant quarterback, you know, for high school football, maybe at the collegiate level? Um, It started at the end of my eighth grade year, going into my ninth grade year. Um, you know, I had some some struggles, you know, because I was, I was originally plan, planning on going to Parsula High School, um, and you know, some something with you know not went down. But me and the coach had a, had a talk, and you know, he's big on he was big on the option. You know, right? Yeah, yeah. Option. I remember that. Mm-hmm. I remember and, that. Uh, right, all right. So you know, he told me he was big on the option style offense. So me and my dad, me and my family sit, sat down and made a, a decision to go to St. Thomas Aquinas. Right. And um, you know, my coach gave me a fair shot at the position. You know, I, I beat a junior out the position, um, which was surprising to me because. You know, coming up out of junior high as an eighth grader, you really, you know, most kids don't don't really think they got, they have a shot at starting as a freshman right. in a, a, a high powered offense at uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. Um, you know, then my coaches always believed in me. Every they would, you know, let me call audibles in in the uh, on the field. Basically, mm-hmm. I was the coach on the field, so I had the free way, the free reign to you know be the the coach on the field. And you know, that's when my eyes opened. And you know, I was like, you know, high school quarterbacks don't do this. Right, for right? real, you know, for I'm real. I'm different. You know, yeah. God, God chose me, you know, to be different. I have different aspects than I'm not just a quarterback. I'm, I'm a leader. I'm a, I'm basically the coach on the field. So the coach doesn't have to worry about, you know, a misplay call or a misread or, or a bad throw, you know. So basically, you know, my ninth grade year, my eyes opened. They was like, you know, basically you the one. Like you, you the one that's going to – you the one that's gonna get out of here. You the one that's gonna, you know, be playing on Sundays if everything go right. Man, TJ, uh, that's 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 phenomenal, that's phenomenal man. Bro. I mean, for for you to have that kind of mindset, you know, in a, in a, going to in, into the eleventh grade year, bro, that that's that speaks volume to to you and the way your parents raised you. But to to kind of like pick it back off of that, um, talk about who kind of contributed to you as a person. Uh, growing up as a man and your development as a quarterback. Uh, y'all are probably gonna laugh when I say this, but you know I've never had a personal quarterback coach. Come on, man! Wow. Only, wow. Know, the only closest thing that I've got to a quarterback coach is my my uh, quarterback coach now at Pontchartrain High School, which is Coach Trey Willie. He is the only you know quarterback coach, and I didn't get him until my incoming into my junior year. I mean my sophomore year. So, wow. you know, all those years of me growing up as a as a young man, you know, learning the quarterback position, reading defenses, you know, my dad had been teaching me how to read defense since I was, what, five, six years old. Come on, man. You know, I knew what a cover one, cover two. I knew where blitzes were coming from, you know, seven, eight years old in Ponsatula Rec League. So, you know, my dad was the only one really 
um, you know, teaching me all this stuff, looking it up, looking at Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, and the Prime and stuff like that, showing me videos and stuff like that, you know, to, to get ready for the next level because he knew God planted a seed in my mother, you know, to come out and, and be the person that I am and, you know, basically – be be different, like right. not just be a quarterback. Be, right. be better than a quarterback. Be be you know, you know just just be great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now listen, man, I got a question for you. Now this is gonna come off as pretty tough though, because I'm about, I'm a little drama, but <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to think about this question for real though. Um, there's a lot of guys who are in-state black American quarterbacks that committed to LSU within the past 10 years. You mm -hmm. think about guys like Brandon Harris, mm -hmm. Anthony Jennings, right. um, Jordan Jefferson, mm -hmm. Ryan Perilous. A lot mm -hmm. of those guys committed to the, the LSU program, but for whatever reason or another, it necessarily didn't work out. You know, what makes you think, you know, right. you're going to be the next up-and-coming guy that's in the Louisiana top-rated pro prospect that's going to commit to this program? You know, what do you think that you're going to bring? I say you're not saying anything bad about them. Right. But what do you think that you're going to help bring to this guy in there, you know, out of Lutcher, you know, who's not going to be starting? You St. Know, James. You know, St. James. St. James. St. James. Yeah. You know, so right. you got to ask yourself, right. you know, from the guys that came before you who played this position, who have not had the, the careers that they wanted to have at LSU, you know, but you right. coming in and saying, man, look, I think I'm going to be a difference maker at this position. I'm going to be the guy that's going to, you know what, my career won't be like this. So what, is that anywhere in your mindset, you know, when you're looking at yourself committing to LSU? Uh, yes, sir. That's a that's a good question. I get yeah. asked that question a lot. Um, you know, you know, growing up, I was always told, you know, you throw this, you throw that, you throw this. But you know, my dad always came in the picture and was like, you know, let him do what he's meant to do. Right. So, you know, growing up, um, you know, basically, they they had a a, a eye offense, so basically line up in the eye, hand it off to the running back, and let him run for you know, five, six yards every play. Right. So as a, a black African-American quarterback uh, that was athletic and mobile, like um, like the kid from Lutcher and like the kids that, that you know, has been there the past 10 years, um, I wouldn't say it was a bad decision to go there. But, you know, in my mindset, I, if, I'm, if I know I'm going into an office where I'm just handing the ball off every play and then on third down and, and five I'm running a, a play-action pass that they expect me to complete, Right. That, you know, we really we don't run a lot. You know, they they want me to complete it, but we don't throw the ball, so my arm not loose. I'm not I'm not mentally into the game because I don't want to be right you know, running uh, running the ball every play. I don't want to be handing the ball off. I don't want to be option optioning you know the ball and stuff like that. So you know, what really tied into and that that's another thing that tied into my decision, Coach Ainsmaker, which is the new offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. He came into the school. And change the whole the whole offense around. Right, right. So now they're they're running an RPO style offense where the quarterback is in shotgun every play. You know he catching the snap, looking at the defense, reading the defense, riding the the running back. If the you know if the D if the D the, the DN uh, do something, then he giving the ball off. If the old, uh, outside linebacker come up, then he pulling and throwing. Right, stuff like right. that. And we run that at Pontchartula High. That's what um, that's another thing that that you know, help my coach change into the RPO style offense is, you know, you basically, the defense can't stop it. Whatever right. the defense do, you got an option. To right, defense. right. It's basically playing test, not seconds. Right, so, right. So, you know, being, with, with my strong arm and my intelligence, you know, I, I felt like it was a, one of the, you know, a good decision for me to be in an RPO style offense. And to be honest, the Eagles ran that, to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. This man knows the position, that, bro. Because it, it, it's not like the RPO not working. Right. It, it, I mean, they run it in the NFL. So, basically, I'm getting ready for the NFL in high school right now. Right, right. And and the, the that's crazy you said it because before last year, everybody looked at Nick Foles like he was a average quarterback. Mediocrity. But Doug Peterson right, right, right. Run, implemented that system for Doug for uh, for uh, Nick Foles, and Nick Foles goes out there and looks like damn the second coming of Tom Brady. So right. I, I understand exactly what you what you um, what you mean when you say about the system and, and and how they running things that you running right now at Pontchartula. So it's like you are gonna go into college damn near running what you was running. I mean I'm, I'm pretty sure they're gonna have a little. Few few changes, changes here, and there. There. yeah, a little but, bit spice, a little. Yeah, yeah, but for the most part. It's gonna be kind of simplified for you because you've been running at at Pontchartula, right? And right, right. How, so, so with that being said, how much are you 
recruiting other kids in 2020 that try to get them to come to LSU with you in that class. Man, that's big time. Uh, I'm recruiting heavy right now. You know? <laughs> all my, all my, it's, basically, it's basically recruiting. I, I'm basically I'm, I'm a part of the LSU staff. Right. Like, I, I'm just more recruiting. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm probably doing more recruiting with my class than the coaches are right now. Right. Wow. You know, I, I'm, I'm daily texting all these players every, every day, you know, making sure I'm creating a bond with them to, to where they know if they come to LSU, you know, they, they got a brother there. Right. Brothers. So I want to start early, build this relationship early, so you know they know. You know if they go to LSU, yeah, that's my boy right there. We've been talking for about two years. You know, right. it's easy if I go to LSU, he gonna be there for me. You know, I start working out with him a lot. Like Trey Palmer, we used to work out a lot, um, throwing the ball, just playing pickup ball. Right. You know, up in Kentwood, we'll meet up, meet up in Kentwood, just throw the ball around. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the main decisions he decided to come because he built a relationship with me. I built a relationship with him. You know, I'm gonna put the ball where it need to be. Right. You know, 24/7. So, so you know, that's another thing that that ties into me going to LSU. You know, basically my recruiting class. I know it's good. Um, you know, I'm just getting a lot of guys from around here to, to buy buy into the system. So, right. did, so did you know you knew Trey Palmer was going to commit to LSU, or you you kind of didn't know? You kind of was wondering. Uh, I've been knew he 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 told me at the beginning of last year he wanted to go there that's that's where he, his family wanted him to go you know he he knew if i committed there then he would have a quarterback right that can get him the ball you know most of the time and not not be you know guessing about if the ball gonna be there if the ball not gonna be there right. where he's gonna have to you know judge and stuff like that so you know my decision you know basically put him in a position to to come now, now i got one last question from this is for listen like I said, I'm about some, I'm about, I'm about some mess. <laughs> listen, who on the schedule got to get it this year? Like you got, you got, you saying to yourself, man, listen, is it, it's a Slidell, is it Laranja, you know, is it Hammond? You know, what school on the schedule this year? You saying to yourself, man, I gotta put, I gotta put up yards on them. I gotta put up stats up. They got to get it. I got to show them that, you know, I ain't. A, listen. What school would that be? What you saying? Go ahead. Oh. Uh, you know, lately, lately we've been having a lot of smack talk because you know I just got my fourth star recently. Right. So you know the schools we plan against, you know they feel like they feel like I'm not as good as, as the media think I am. So you know they on social media doing all that talking and stuff like that. I don't entertain none of that. But you know, I think I think it gotta be him. You know, we we've been beating them <laughs> for for nine nine out of the ten years. They beat us last year. And they had a parade on the field, like they wow. were. Wow! So, you know, I ain't like that. You know, they was all in my face. You know, doing all that stuff, doing backflips in my face and stuff. So, I, to me, that's I, that's disrespectful. Right, yeah, right, right. right. Like, you know, I'm I'm at their neck. So, <laughs> you know, now that I'm I'm more mature this year, I, I didn't got faster. I run a, I think a four eight five in the forty now. You know, my arm strength and got better. My accuracy didn't got better. My mobility didn't got better. So you know, I, I think it's him. Ooh, Lord! I'm gonna leave the last question for you, G. <laughs> Man, I got you, you know, you know, I gotta, I gotta, I'm, I'm still ironing out the details of what all the games I'm gonna cover this year. But I gotta make sure I'm in attendance for at least one of your games this year, bro. Um, my last question for you, man, before we let you go: Who, who is it? In, what quarterback in the NFL, past or present, that you kind of watched growing up or, or watch now that you kind of feel like you emulate your game around? Um, I, I model my game around two quarterbacks actually, and Cam Newton because of my size, mm -hmm. my mobility, you know, my my ability to get out the pocket and run a little bit if I have to, and then for that being a student of the game, um, Peyton Manning and, and Tom Brady, you know, I watched Tom Brady's show and just watched admired how he was, you know, always in his room watching film. Right. He watched film. He don't even, you know, he he rarely goes to sleep. That's how much. That's how much he want to win. Right. You know, he's just in his room, watch the film, continue to watch the film, getting better. And I feel like that's where you're gonna separate yourself from an average quarterback. Right. Yeah, right. It, it becomes yeah, so, your it, it the becomes... mentality of the game. You know, it, it has to be. I got to get better mentally before I, I get better physically. Right. Right. Because you know, a lot of quarterbacks can throw the ball 
70, 80 yards, right. and a fast receiver can go get it. Right. But how many quarterbacks can, can pick a defense apart in a two-minute offense, you know, can pick a defense apart, you know, completely, uh, I mean, throw the ball to, uh, accurately, right. you know, and just basically just pick the defense apart and move the ball downfield each series. Not that, just a one-hit wonder. Well, it, that goes to that point. You know, he, Tom Brady is a guy of his craft. It's right. not just a career for him. Right. That's his craft. That was Peyton Manning's craft. So right, you're right. studying the right guys. A lot of guys, are they're professionals. You know, and there's nothing wrong with being a professional. Right. But then there's the guys who separate themselves by their craft. Right. You know, that this is more than just a career. This is more than just a profession. This is what they do. Mm -hmm. And for, for you to want to model your game around guys like that, Man, that's a testament to a, a great career to come. Right, right. Great career to come. Man, TJ, man, I, I got to say this before we let you go, bro. Man, the, the, what your parents have done with you is, 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 a, is phenomenal, bro. You are a very well-spoken kid, bro. You know how to articulate yourself. Your mindset <laughs> mentality is off the charts. There's no doubt in my mind you're going to be successful, not just in sports, but in life, life. bro. Uh, keep doing your thing, bro. And we got to have you back on the show. Before the season out, man. Promise me you're going to do that for us. Yes, sir. I got you. I got you. Yeah, man. man. <laughs> TJ Finley, man. The LSU commit, man. We signing out. Man. Hell of a kid That's right there, man. That's a hell of a kid, bro. That's a hell of a kid. Hell of a kid. That's a hell of a kid. I like how he was able to break down and tell the type of offense that they mm -hmm. were running and the mm -hmm. type of offense that LSU was running and right. how he's getting them ready for. And how he was able to say, man, this is what they do. The Philadelphia Eagles are doing. For a young man in 11th grade to able to see offense that way, yeah, that's yeah. powerful because most yeah. kids are not seeing offenses that way. They're seeing numbers. They're right. seeing, you know, hey, they were, you know, the play chart is one, two, three, four, whatever case may be. They're not really looking at how mm -hmm. a structure of an offense is supposed to look. For him to make that assumption and, mm -hmm. and make that comparison, mm -hmm. man. Most kids most kids in high school are just going off pure talent. Pure talent. Are, are, are the coaches telling them where to go with the ball. Pure TJ talent. is not that kind of kid. TJ understands defenses. He understands uh, uh, coverages. He understands uh, the, the ability to be able to anticipate. Yeah, right. That's one of the biggest traits you got to have as a quarterback, the ability to be, to be able to anticipate Agreed. What, a, what, what a linebacker going to be, what a safety going to drop yeah. down at, what the defense what the defense line doing, understanding uh, your, uh, your, your option routes with your receivers, your running backs come out the backfield, your, how to slide your protection. He understands all of those things, and that goes to why he's a full-star recruit and why LSU is so big on him. And just hearing him talk and, understand, and, under, and how you understand the game, there's no doubt in my mind that kid gonna be successful, yeah. man. Uh, when he get to LSU, I, I, I would agree with that. The only thing I would, you know, notion is that again, I, the guys I mentioned that came before him, that right. were black quarterbacks, man. Right. And, and those guys were very highly rated, you know, in Louisiana, mm -hmm. coming out of high school to go into that program for whatever reason. Or another last one that that was highly drafted right. was Jamarcus Russell, who didn't work out as a pro, but had a very good LSU career. Yeah. I didn't even mention Marcus Randall, who played quarterback that didn't, you know, didn't get drafted. We knew he wasn't gonna be a quarterback if you watched him at LSU mm -hmm. at the pro level. But you start seeing some of the black quarterbacks that had to put them into the room, like, man, it just didn't really work out for them. Mm -hmm. I, from the, his, the way he spoke, I believe that can be something that's different for his case. Right. If he gets the opportunity to start at that program. As long as the same staff and people are in the same position, because you don't want to see a bad season for LSU. Then all of a sudden you got a commit like that coming in who understands offense, who understands terminology and right. understands situations. Right. And now you got a new head coach. You got a new officer coordinator. You got so many different changes right. to where it does not best benefit his skill set. Right, right. That's what I don't want to see. Right. The guy looks like the guy sounds like man. I understand what things are and how things are going out, and how things are breaking down. Right. I just don't want to see that, you know, from a commit of that caliber, mm -hmm. man, going to a program and all of a sudden, man, people get fired. You know, cause things happen. It's a business. Right. And man, hey, listen, we're on the winning eight game. We're trying to win ten. We're not compete for national championship. We're not in the book. That's a that's a highly rated program in Baton Rouge. If they're not in the com com the conversation, boosters get involved. Yeah, cut cords. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember I remember uh, hearing about him as eighth grade year. Coach Randell Leggett, who was the head coach at St. Thomas Aquinas, told me about. It. He said, "Man, he got a kid that's in the eighth grade named T.J. Finley." He said, "G, he gonna be big time." He even sent me like, cause back even in his eighth grade year, man, he had like YouTube highlights, and I'm mean, gonna watch them. I'm like, bro, he nice. And then his ninth grade year, when he got to St. Thomas Aquinas. He was like, bro, he going to start as a ninth grade. I'm like, what? 
Went to a game, bro. I mean, he, I think he threw for like three touchdowns that game at like 200 some yards. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, no disrespect to the kids that was at the time was a Qantas, but he wasn't throwing to no hell of five athletes. Right. <laughs> and and that, that put that let me know that this kid he's is big time. time. He got he's a big, big time. He got a big time he's on. Big, he got a big time. He got a big time on, bro. He's big time, and it, it, it's it's he is. For people who don't know for the 2020 class. According to 24 um, seven sports, he is the number one rated quarterback in the state. Right. He right. is the number one rated guy. He's the four star recruit. Right. Yeah, he is the what we call the cream of the crop. You know, come out. Of, I just hope that his situation going into LSU stays identical to what he sees now. Right. <laughs> right. Because they they they, have, they got high hopes. High hopes. <laughs> high hopes. Well, listen. Um, we got a few minutes left for the show. Obviously, the Saints game is on. Um. Who are we looking forward to this preseason? What, what guy that you looking at like, man, I got my nose out on this dude here. You know, we been, you know, take snippets at the game a little bit. What guy are you looking at, man? Who was I talking? Tonight um, and for the whole preseason, man, it's, it's two people I'm really paying – well, really three um, that I'm really paying attention to. First is JT Barrett. Yes. Um, Because we all know that the Saints uh, – Time and time is, is running out for Drew Brees. Yeah, Uncle Tom is undefeated. We know that. We, we know, know that. that. Drew Brees, That's not Father Time is catching up with him. I think Drew Brees maybe have two years left. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so and I think JT Barrett, you know, coming from the Ohio State program, he was a winner. Um, this kid understands offenses. Coming from somebody like Urban Meyer, I think he has the ability to be able to be Drew Brees' successor maybe, so to speak. We will hire you down here, man. So I, I'm very curious to see how he going to look in this preseason because I want to be able to look at him and say, look, I think this is take over for Drew Brees when he leaves. Right. So I'm, I'm interested to see him. Um, Deion Yelder, um, the kid out of Western Kentucky at mm -hmm. tight end. I really want to see if he can be able to make this 53-man roster undrafted um, because we got Ben Watson, who is aging. Yeah. And, and we got uh, Josh Hill. I like Josh Hill, but Josh Hill is not an every, day, every down tight end. And, no, he hasn't solidified himself to be a, a maybe right, a, right. A, a every down nor a franchise tight end. Right, right. But he's a good serviceable tight end, got Correct. good speed. But I think De Deion Yelda has a good chance to make this team, and I want to watch him in preseason to see – how he looks and see if he can help this offense because the tight end position is really the only weak link I see mm -hmm. on the Saints awesome. offense. And my last one is Traquan Smith. Uh, <laughs> we know Ted again, Father Tom is catching up with him. Even though I think Trey, uh, even, though, even though I think that Ted again is going to still be a, a, a key contributor right. to the Saints offense, but we know he doesn't have that much longer left. He might right. have a year or two left in his bag. But Traquan Smith, yes. for the stuff I've been seeing him through our training camp, camp, this kid look like he could be a big time <sighs> threat. Down the Stug. field in an intermediate game. Stug. I'm very curious to see how he gonna look throughout this preseason, and if he could be a, a big time player. Stud. What with, with, with Michael like Thomas, Thomas and then Cam Meredith coming over. Stud. With Kamara and Ingram, Ingram. and how our offensive of line it looks like it's gonna be star studded. Our offense gonna be looking like it's gonna be top three again this year. Uh, I, listen. And then and then the thing about it too, we young. We young. We young. The Michael Smith. Uh. uh 25 or younger. Uh, Cam Merritt at 25 Not or younger. younger. Traquan Smith, a rookie. Mike Thomas. Uh, I said Mike Thomas. Oh, yeah. Ava Kamara, young. Uh, uh, Ingram, what, 26? Mm -hmm. Something like that. And our offensive line not that old. Pete, he young. Everybody's All stay young. Max Unk, I think, the oldest person on that line. Unk just turned 30. Just turned 30. You know what I'm saying? So, we very young. And then our secondary. Our secondary, young. King you know what Crawley, I'm saying? Marcus, our D-line, young. Lattimore. Cam Jordan, probably Marcus the Marcus Williams, young. Yeah, our, whole, our secondary is, is very young, young. young. Very young. And our D-line, young. Cam Jordan is probably the only person on our line that's probably over the uh, 30 or older. It's a young team. So, that's what I'm saying. So It's a young football team. But those three guys are the guys I'm looking for. Deion Yield, that tight end. Uh, JT Barrett to see if he can be, he can make that second string mm -hmm. uh, quarterback spot. Cause, so, he can end up being a successor of Drew Brees, potentially. Right. And uh, Trey Quine Smith, man. So, that's the three guys I'm looking forward to most in this preseason for the Saints. Man, number one on my list is Trey Quine Smith. I mean, i watched highlights of this guy at camp. Um, this guy's been exceptional um, for some of the plays that he was able to make throughout camp. Um, I'm looking forward to him to each and every game that he can play, you know, during the preseason. I'm, I'm looking forward, you know, he right now to me, he's pouncing in to me. Because of the health of Cam Meredith, mm -hmm. I have Trey Quine Smith pouncing in third just because of the health of him. Mm -hmm. But obviously, if Cam Meredith could come back healthy, you, that's going to be a bad I'm watching what he I, And I haven't been hearing too much about Cam yeah. Meredith throughout he's the training He's not healthy. Camp. He's not healthy. So he's playing, but he's not getting the reps that, yeah. that Trey Quine Smith is. To me, I still want to see what Alex Alone can do. 
the, the, the third round. He, pick, he, like, he was ball. He was balling before you. He was hurt. balling before he got injured. So, but him coming back healthy, I'm still interested in the scene throughout this camp. You know, is his injury gonna let him hold up? Is it gonna allow him to still be a dominant factor football player for this football team? I'm looking forward to that. And right. two, third, I'm looking forward to that. Like, I don't know about this guy. I think Natrell Jamison. Out yeah, of West out of Con- Wisconsin. Out of yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the second in the second half of football. I want to see this guy was a very stud at, at Wisconsin at safety. Went undrafted. To me, he could have should have been a draftable guy. I don't know. They got drafted. The Saints didn't draft him. You sure? I'm positive. He was I not drafted. Charles James got drafted. He didn't get picked. He didn't get picked. He okay. went as an undrafted free agent to the Saints. So I'm very much interested in seeing what he does throughout camp because I think there's a spot right now early on a special team that he can make this team. Mm-hmm. You know, didn't be situational. Now, Charles James did get drafted. Fifth wrong. I know I wasn't tripping. Fifth round. Yeah. Oh, keep going, though. Deal. <laughs> yeah. I know I wasn't tripping. Okay. Well, my bad. Yeah. But my bad. My bad for the error. But here's the deal. I'm looking forward to seeing what he does throughout preseason. I, I think he's a stud. I think, you know, he could have been a highly rated player. I think he had a very good, dominant college football career. I think he could be a good guy that can play in the box, kind of like kind of Kenneth Vicaro did. Mm-hmm. But also, he, he can cover space. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to have him out there covering like he's Marcus Williams either. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I'm interested in seeing – what he does throughout camp and throughout these preseason but games. But I, I see in training camp they got him playing in corner. He not even playing safety. That's so bad. I, I, I'm, I'm wondering how that's going to look too. That's bad. You if know what I'm saying? Corner, I, and, I, and I know I heard Sean Payton saying that they want to see how he's going to look in a return game too. Yeah. Because he did return kicks at Wisconsin yeah. a little bit. So. I, but I'm interested in seeing that, listen, did we get a fifth round gym? Right. Was, you know, maybe not saying that he can take over defensively, but, you know, if he can come in and make plays on special teams right now, maybe in the next year or so, get some defensive snaps. Or did to an injury, he can get some right. snaps. Man, you got a Marcus Williams, you got mm-hmm. a Nathan James. Man, you got a solid secondary, bro. Right. With, with the King Cross and, and Marshawn Lattimore's out there. Patrick Robinson. Patrick Robinson in the slot. Man. And don't forget, we, we drafted a kid from Boston College, uh, Cameron Moore. Cameron Moore. I want to see how he going to look. At, at corner. Mm-hmm. So, it, it, there's a lot of things to look forward to. And, and again, I'm not st- – see – I'm not going to hear and state the opposite. I'm going to look at what Marcus, you know, that point, yeah. No. I know he's going to make this team. Right. <laughs> right. I'm talking about guys who I thought who had a very good college football career. They got a lot of uncertainty. A lot of uncertainty with their careers, but these guys made plays. I'm looking forward to seeing those guys. Yeah. Do I and uh, this is what I want to say about Marcus Davenport before we go. You know, People feel like we did, we moved up a lot. We gave up a lot to move up in the draft. To get Initially, this kid. I did too. And I, I, I already I know how a lot of us Saints fans are. Because I'm like that to a certain yeah, extent. Yeah. If Marcus Davenport don't come out here and wreck, and wreck shop and he don't come away with 10-plus sacks this season, people are going to say he a bust. We gave up too much to get him. Woo, do, woo, do, woo. Look, it's going to take time for yes, this kid. This kid is raw. raw. He has all the tools to be big time, though. Let it all work out. Let it. Let it. It's a process. Mm-hmm. If if Marcus Davenport can give us consistent pressure and give us about six sacks this year, I'm cool with I'm cool that. that. I feel like I'm that's cool a that. successful rookie yeah. year, and we can build on that going forward. So let's not get all our panties in a bunch. If this kid don't come out here and just dominate from the jump, it's gonna take a while from him. Well, it also take a while. You also gotta take a consideration that it sounds crazy, but man, we got Trey Hickerson. Um, mm-hmm. You got uh, Alex Okafor. Mm-hmm. Muhammad, the Muhammad, kid that's seven-round pick from Miami. Miami. Mm-hmm. So you do have guys. A- Anyamata. Anyamata. I think Anyamata going to be big time this year. You got guys that he's going to be competing with reps with throughout camp and throughout the preseason with. So I think it's one of the best situations because you don't have to just throw him in there and expect him to produce Pro Bowl statistics, if right. that makes sense. You don't right. have to throw him in there and ask him, man, I'm looking for Khalil Mack type season from this kid. I'm looking for one of these because you moved up, you know, the amount of selection we moved up to get him. Mm-hmm. They say, man, I'm, I'm, you're looking for a, a Vaughn Miller type season, a Camille like type season. Right. You don't have to expect that him because there are guys there that can produce and do well mm-hmm. ahead of him. Mm-hmm. You can get him in a situational football and get him on yeah. a right tackle in a situation, man. And let his and let his career progress. Long you already know you got the most durable defensive in, in all of football. Right. That's, that's not going to wood. That's not going to wood. Guy hasn't missed the game yet in his yeah. career. Yeah. So let's not just be like man, all because if he had six sacks or five sacks, he had a disappointing rookie. No, he has to learn how to play. Understand the guy came from Unitar- University of San Antonio. The guy came from a small school. He has all the physical. And tools. he and he didn't really his freshman and sophomore year he was bad. Bad. 
he didn't really start showing how good he could be till his third year. Right. So, so it's yeah. gonna take some time. And I and the reason why I'm not tripping about that because that lets me know this kid has a lot of miles left on his body. That's it. And there's he, not a lot of way and tell here. Yeah, and he's his upside is tremendous. I just want to see this kid show growth throughout the season. Growth, growth, keep getting better, progressing throughout the season. I, I that's, think, all, that's all I really care about. I don't about. think unless he goes out there and sh unless his physical unless his physical attributes just literally dominate. Mm -hmm. I don't forecast this guy really coming out here and really being a, a workhorse his first year. Mm -hmm. Kind of like look at I look at it this way. When we drafted Robin Meacham back in I think um, I can't think of what season we drafted Robin Meacham, but we drafted yeah, Robin Meacham in the like season. Oh seven or something. Oh seven. Oh two thousand seven. We drafted him after the Roger Bush year. Robert Meacham didn't really blossom in this offense to his really his fourth season. Oh nine yeah. when we won the Super Bowl. We won the Super Bowl when he had the ten touchdowns and he had he like averaged he averaged the most uh, uh, yards yard per, per catch in the that, NFL in the NFL that year. And it was like, man, you thought he would have been a bust after his first year. He didn't play his first year. Right. But you saw him working out with Well, yeah, I think he had like a broken foot or he something. He had a broken foot. But he was he was on the active roster, but he was doing a lot of workouts with different things. But he didn't really – in the first – the other two, you do like, man, he's really a bust. But that fourth year, when he put him in that, at that third and fourth receiver, he dominated. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying about why this guy has Marcus Davenport, I'm not looking for this guy to come in and, like I said, I'm not looking, looking for Pro Bowl statistic seasons – Early right. in his career. Right. Maybe year three, year four, I'm saying, hey, listen, his talent and his ability should start to match up. But I'm not expecting that year one because there are some guys on this team right now. They're going to play. Mm -hmm. And God forbid, I'm not saying like that, whatever guy like Kihaha still makes the scene. Mm -hmm. You got another guy who can still come in and do situation in football. So I'm not expecting this overload of mm -hmm. high expectations. Within this first year, maybe year two, I'm, I'm, I start to expect some progression. Year three, I expect some progression. But I'm not expecting that off the dump. Right. He's in the best Especially situation. Especially with how raw he is. How raw he how is. How raw he is. Exactly. And I'm going to tell you something else, too. Um, the reason why I'm, I'm really excited about what the Saints can do this year because we have a lot of depth. Yep. You know, in years past... You be like, man, I like our starters, but man, if he get hurt, bro, we we gonna be in a bad situation. Down. Bad, this, man. This, this, this is, year, this is this. This so. year we got a lot of depth at the old line. I, I even want. I, I'm curious to see how Rick Leonard gonna look. The kid out of Florida State, Florida State. to tackle. I, I want to see how he gonna look. That kid like six, seven, three something. Yeah. Um, the secondary we got a lot of depth. Yeah. D line we got a lot of depth. The running backs we got depth. Mark Ingram, Terrence West, Edmonds, Kamara, Boston Scott. We we got we you we deep. we deep you deep we deep you deep. I think like I say, tight end is the only position that I'm a little leery about. Cause we didn't really address the position. We didn't really you know you, you cut Kobe Flynn, you bring Ben Watson back. And Ben Watson coming off an injury too. Correct. And, and we didn't he, really and he old. Right. And we didn't draft like a Hayden Hurst or somebody like that. We didn't really address right. that position, which we knew as fans. We knew there was a need going into the draft. Like man, look if you don't move up, you right. can't get the quarterback. Right. Look. Hayden Hurst could be there. The other kid out of North Dakota, you know, North Dakota State, we'd be mm -hmm. like, man, look, mm -hmm. those guys going to be a better. kid out of Penn State. Yeah, kid out of Penn State. Mm -hmm. We didn't really address that position. But, mm -hmm. man, again, there's another draft for that. There's another, you know, another year for that. You may right. not address it this year. Right. But, man, the, the, even a linebacker, when you bring in DeMario Davis in. And I'm got, telling y'all now, <laughs> DeMario Davis is going to be the – the probably the, the 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 backbone of that defense. defense. Yeah. I know I, I, we all know Cam Jordan is Cam Jordan, but Demar Davis gonna make that thing run this yeah. year. This kid gonna run sideline to sideline. He a tackling machine, and he's we got more athletic right there. This is gonna be equivalent to the signing when we got Vilma. But Tamaris West look big, boy. When we got Vilma, yeah. when we got Vilma, that took our defense to another level when we won the Super Bowl. Yeah, because you already had Scott Shanley and you already had Scott Fajardo on the team already. We haven't had a Mike linebacker like Vilma till now. Demar Davis gonna be big time. Uh, Allen Allen Anderson asks how will how will Washington Redskins look this year? Well, I, you, I, I, don't think, I don't see them making the playoffs. No, I, I think they're going like seven and nine. I, I, when I look at the Redskins, I look at the Redskins. I see when I see one thing: you you, you trade quarterbacks. Obviously, um, I I got big high hopes from a touchdown standpoint. Red zone threat from Josh Dobson. He had six touchdowns last year. I still think that Josh Dobson, you know, is still coming along. You know, you got the other, the other receiver, Jamison, but you're still mm -hmm. unsure at running back. I know you drafted, you no know, Geis out of LSU. You know, Chris Thompson is coming back off an of injury. They got you know, Crowder in the Crowder slot. Crowder in the slot. Um, offensive line is still weak. It's outside of um, Trent Williams, you know, you kind of – it's there's a lot of missing pieces there. But defensively, you know, I don't know where you're going. And at the end of the day, you don't really have a dominant pass rusher on that mm -hmm. team. You know, 
people think Ryan Kerrigan is that guy. To me, he's not. He's a situational guy, but mm -hmm. he's not a very dominant pass rusher. Mm -hmm. They don't really have a dominant defensive tackle. Linebacker, maybe still hit and miss. You still got Josh, Josh um, Norman playing that corner, mm -hmm. but the other side is atrocious. Um, so they're gonna be seven to nine. They're gonna be seven to nine. You gotta look at the Eagles. Still gonna be a dominant team. The, the Cowboys. I, 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 think you see the, I think you see the Giants. The Giants. The Giants get back to the playoffs. They get yeah. back to the playoffs this year. You, you, you look at the Giants. Um, very good football. Shaquan Barkley. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think Sterling Shepard takes another big leap. Right. You know, this year here, Elvin Ingram. Um, Eli. You know, has more weapons. He can run the football right. now. And defensively, you know, you traded JPP down at um, Tampa Bay, but man, you still it's this, that's a good football. You you added um. Overtree mm -hmm. from the from the from the Rams, man. Look, <laughs> the Giants gonna be probably back in contention. I'm with you on this one. Probably a seven and nine season for the Redskins. Yeah. And you're talking about getting rid of um, Jay Gruden. That's just what I see, you know. And um, Alec um, Win Fortner says not sure, but Baker looks decent. He's talking about. The, I think he's talking about the big tackle. Right. You know, but that's how I think about the Redskins. Uh, it's a seven to nine season. I, I, I don't forecast the Redskins doing anything dominant. You know, I think they come. They probably last to the Cowboys. I think the Eagles win the division. The mm -hmm. Giants, you know, could possibly be a wild card team. The Cowboys ain't got a target to throw to for him. You know, Jason Witten, arguably one of the you know top five tight ends in the history NFL history. You know, retires. Dak Prescott, you know, takes another step back. And at the end of the day, the Redskins are just the Redskins. Sharon Sheen with Thomas kickoff. Where you been? Where you been? Where you been? You been? You know we we in the second quarter. Yeah. <laughs> second quarter. I'm waiting for JT Barrett to come to come on, man. That that's that, that's the guy. That's another guy I'm looking forward to. Obviously, the Saints organization is Ohio State. You around here? We got a lot of Ohio State players in the past three or four seasons. You know, so you turn them out from you know Lattimore to now Barrett to Mike Thomas, Ted Ginn. You know, so I think we probably got a lot of Ohio State guys, which they got a good program. You know, so at the end of the day, I'm looking forward to. If Tom Savage is our opening D, second-string quarterback, I'm not feeling good about that. I agree. I'm not feeling good about that. I, I'm hoping that JT Barrett can upstage this kid and, and get that second-string spot, bro. I, uh, I, I'm really hoping. I, and I know they, they, they're they trying to throw Taysom Hill into the fire, which I think, and I said this last year, man, they just switched this guy. They switched this guy's position. He can't play quarterback for me. He can't play quarterback. I mean, He's I, special teams, tight end. Receiver? I've been saying I thought he would be a good tight end because the, the kid could run. He got speed. He got speed. So I, I would, I, I would love to. Yeah. If, if he can't make it, if, if JT Barrett ended up making this team and getting and making that second string uh, spot for the Saints, I think you got to think about moving Taysom Hill position. You got to move him to receiver move, or tight, tight end. Or something like that, bro. You got to move him. Because the kid an athlete. That's it. He's definitely an athlete. Out of BYU. I, out of BYU. He, he, yeah, he's an athlete. I don't, I don't forecast him making that team or not no disrespect to him, any team at quarterback. I think that he's an athlete, and no offense to Tom Savage, but what I saw in Houston was enough for me. Right. <laughs> right. It was enough for me. I, 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 I'm out. I, I'm, I'm rooting. I'm biased. I'm rooting for JT Barrett. Right. That's just what it is. Right. If JT Barrett win a job, I'd go in the season like, man, you know what? I don't feel that bad. He has a high, good pedigree at Ohio State. I know he was coached well. I know he yeah, played exactly. with great talent. Right. And at the end of the day, he was a winner. He was a winner. Tom Savage, if I'm right, he went to Boston. He went to Penn State, I believe. I forgot where you went. I think he went to Penn State. I could be off him, but when he was drafted, he was drafted pretty high to come in um, for Brian Hoyer and Ryan Malley. He couldn't beat them out. And then when they drafted, you know, Deshaun Watson, he started the first three games, and it, it was atrocious. Right. I'm done with Tom Savage. I'm out. And I know Bill O'Brien's a heck of a quarterback coach. Right. So right. I'm out on him. Right. You know. Allen Allen Anderson said, "What do you think of the new quarterback for the Redskins?" Alex Smith is 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 is. Second tier, decent, decent, decent. He's solid, solid. He's solid, solid quarterback. He going he going he gonna make all the all the right decisions, and you know, do I think he can lead your team to the promised land? Huh? Uh, I don't know about that, but you you know he gonna make the right decisions. He ain't gonna be turnover prone. He, that's it. It just he never turn the football. I, I don't know if it's, I don't know if he's a quarterback that could just lead your team to the promised land. You, you got you got to have a great defense. He got to be in the Nick Foles situation. In a great running game. In a great running game. He got to mm -hmm. be in a great situation. Alex Smith, <clears> he's a he's a, he's a four thousand yard passer. He's a 25-touchdown guy, and he's going to have very few interceptions. But is he an elite quarterback? No. He's in that below second tier, starting third tier situation. And that's what Alex Smith has always been, and this is how he lasted this long. He's going to start off red hot. First five games, we were talking about Alex Smith being the MVP candidate. Mm -hmm. Then after that, it's going to start to tail off. 
That's just what it is. There's nothing against him. But if you don't have a great defense, you don't have a great running game, don't expect so much from Alex Smith. Right, right. He's he. I'm not. I'm not putting him. He, he's above Sam Bradford. But at the end of the day, he's not. He's not. He's not Matt Ryan. Let's not. Let's not be stupid. Real talk. <laughs> let's not be stupid. So that's just my take on that. But the second half is about to come to a close. You know, Kihaha out there making, trying to make plays, trying to make <laughs> the team. You know, I. He on, he on his last leg. He on his last leg. You know, I don't know how many ACLs he got. <laughs> I don't know how many ACLs he got. But listen, um, guys, tune in next Thursday. Um, we're going to be back. Obviously, Saints play on Friday next Thursday. So mm-hmm. we're going to be able to have a full two-hour show. I know a lot of people are trying to catch the game. They're trying to catch, the, you know, see who we're checking out. I'm going to try to get you guys stream the second second half if I can. I know a lot of people have been tuning in, sending me emails constantly. Fred, you're streaming the game, you're streaming the game. You're streaming. I'm going to try to get to you guys. Cody Kessler, you're bad out there. I don't know why you, you know, still trying to get a job from out of USC. You suck. <laughs> it's bad out there. Um, but y'all stay tuned each and every Thursday. Fan of you, real fans talk sports, New Orleans Talk Network. Listen, big shout out to, you know, TJ Finley of Postula. You know, mm-hmm. guy got a great career. If anybody checking out high school sports, man, look, check out Postula this year. If you're yeah. looking for one of the best quarterbacks in the state, yeah, he's right there in Postula, man. Anything with closing remarks, G? Uh, man, I'm just. Looking forward to see what, the, what some of these rookies and the undrafted free agents are uh, going to do in the second half for the Saints, man. I want to see who going to be able to contribute to us this year. That's all I care about in the preseason. I don't care about if we win the game. I don't care about none of the starters, what they're doing, if they look good. I don't care about what kind of defense we're running. I just want to see who has the tools, who has the ability to be able to help us this season. That's all I care about. That's all I care about. I, 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 that, that's what I'm looking for. I'm, the wins and loss on the record is not that important to me. It's more about the reps. And the guys seeing, you know, what they do in situational football, especially the, when we talk about second and third quarter when backups are in. I'm looking to see guys who are gonna go out there and make plays. Right. That's what I'm looking forward to. The, the win loss total is not is not that important. It's just not. But I just want to see guys who make go out there making plays and getting reps. But listen, guys, that's our show. Y'all tune in next Thursday. Fan view, real fans, talk sports. Add a friend, tag a friend. We out. Y'all check us out next Thursday. <laughs>